How you doing YouTube? This is Manny. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a how to or what to do on uh, to change a brake valve on a 2001 uh, Kensworth T2000. Uh, this is my personal Kensworth. Uh, I'm doing a lot of maintenance on this before I actually take it on the road. And there's not a lot of information how to do certain stuff on these trucks. So I with a lot of research. I was able to find the right part number and I'm going to share with you guys so that way if you guys have a similar issue you have an idea of what the job entails of and what, what you're gonna have to do to get the you know put on the brake valve so first of all I got my little station all set up here I'm gonna be doing this outside in my parking storage area uh, I put up a little tent because this Texas heat gets up to over a hundred degrees now so the issue that I'm having right now is this section here uh, when I press on the brake pedal it's pretty much going to the floor I ended up driving this vehicle from McAllen all the way to San Antonio, a five hour drive. Uh, and uh, I made it, but it's just not as comfortable as I want it to be. You can see here that this thing is already all the way down to the floor. It'll stop, but it should be up here, you know. So I'm going to have to remove all of this and I'm going to try to do the best that I can to get the video footage and talk a little bit about what needs to happen. Um, but I will share the the part number of the part. Um, I found a bunch of companies online and then cross-reference part numbers. And I was able to find the part on Amazon for $89. So this is the part we're going to be installing here. Well, it looks like this in the truck. It will be, it'll be looking like this in, in the truck. And this is what I'm going to be installing. And this portion here is what the brake pedal touches and this is the part number here so it's the TR800 629 and that's cross reference from same part numbers of the Kensworth T2000 you can see if you look at the part it's a similar similar part here similar part now we just have to remove all these hoses and try to put everything back. Now what I am going to do before I start removing hoses is is label everything accordingly to the position that it's supposed to be going into because I don't want to mess up uh, anywhere where any hoses are supposed to go. All right guys, so now you see I have all the plastics removed. Um, that'll all get cleaned at a later time. I'm actually gonna just leave that removed until this truck gets cleaned. Um, what we can begin to do first is find our gas pedal. It should be holding by two bolts, a top and bottom. We need to remove that because this brake pedal is held on by a pin in between before we can actually remove the bolts holding down the entire bracket 
and the pin comes out on this side and the gas pedal is going to be in the way uh, gas pedal is not hooked up by a cable it's hooked up electronically so you don't have to worry about um, cables and stuff like that but there is a plug up there somewhere because I kind of am familiar with the setup based on another YouTube video that I watched um, so I kind of know what to expect um, so let's start by finding where the bolts are for this guy and it's somewhere next to this bracket on the engine bay so it should be two bolts top and bottom and it's just, the assembly should be able to come out towards you and let's try to find that all right guys so i found the bolts i think that it's the bolts and it's right next to the assembly let me see if i can get right there on the bottom of the green hose um and it's a 13. so i'm gonna go in there see if i can get it Hmm. Ah, bolts right in there. I was looking for that. Back to guys, I was correct. Uh, I remove these little uh, bolts here. Um, you got to put a little bit of uh, pressure on it because uh, all the dirt and debris kind of locks everything into place. And I did that just with an electric cord ratchet, an extension, and a 13 socket. Now we can go back inside see where we're at okay and now that's this is removed so you can see see what I mean that this is just plugged in you can move that up move that out the way and now we can start focusing on the actual pedal uh, pedal assembly itself we don't want to remove any bolts yet I want to remove this cotter pin in here this little area has one cotter pin we need to move that out so we can, this pedal can, can actually just come out of its way because behind the pedal is going to be some hidden bolts uh, that we're going to be removing, removing uh, later. Um, but you can see here my brakes. And it, yeah. So let's worry about this cotter pin and move on to the next step. All right guys, so we have the brake pedal removed. Um, the pin is gonna have to be greased later on, as well as possibly this here. It's really dirty and gunked up with debris. And we wanna keep these actually lubricated and not gunked up like this. But we'll do that at the end. Uh, so the next is a T40. Um, we have all the, all the bolts now, now exposed. And this is what's holding on to the brake valve. Uh, but before we remove that, now we need to start loosening up all the hoses. Yeah, so now we can start loosening up all the hoses and try to get everything transferred over onto the new assembly here. All right, you guys, so I found out the issue. Um, I have everything removed here. I'm going to begin transferring all the the fittings to the other one and I can already see I was looking for what the difference was and you see it from here how this is already stuck inside below the line 
and the new one is out. So this is stuck. You can see it here. It's already below, below the line and it's just stuck in that position and the new one is out. Um, I was able to grab this piece from the inside. This pushes on this um, when you push on the brake pedal. Um, and I'm going to lube this up very, very well. I know that this can also get stuck when it's a lot of dirt and debris. So I'm going to put this back in the hole up here. Um, but I'm going to put a lot of lube in there. Um, see if I can go back into the garage and get some lube. Or I can spray some WD-40, but I, I, I would rather put some grease in there. Uh, and then once I begin to transfer all the pieces I'm gonna use this here um, got this on Amazon it's just some pipe sealant this was 10 bucks and start transferring all the fittings over Alright guys, so I have all my fittings put on. Um, this, the actual thread sailing is going to need some time to cure, but I can install. I just won't start it uh, probably until tomorrow. I need to go to Home Depot right now because um, I'm going to need a fitting to put here. As the uh, stock one is already blocked off. And I'm just going to use air hose coupling, but I need a, the fitting. If I can't find the fitting, I'll just put in a, a block off um, fitting. But I'm gonna see if I can find an adapter so I can at least have a, an air hose if I wanna air up the tire, the front tire or something. Um, I, get, I can have that option. So um, the aftermarket ones, uh, just pay attention. You know, if you're gonna buy these aftermarket ones, um, you're gonna save some time if you can get the fitting ahead of time. And I just didn't even know that this was open. So I'm just gonna put an air hose there or uh, fitting. Okay, Alright guys, I'm back. Um, I put the fitting on already. Uh, you can see here, uh, this is ready to install. Um, the fitting size uh, for that that I got at Home Depot was a 3 8 uh, MIP and quarter inch FIP if you need to find the fitting. And then I have a spare fitting here which is like a block off which is, uh, you can see the label there. Uh, in case this fails at some other point, if I'm on the road, I'm going to carry this and some Teflon tape and I'll be easy, uh, be able to switch this out on the road. Uh, but I just wanted this as an emergency, just like last resort, if somehow the coupling fails or breaks or snaps or something and it's leaking air, uh, then I have uh, the part that's going to fix it. So now that this is all set and ready to go, it needs to be installed so right now the temperature just went up oh by the way i, I spent about uh, nine dollars and 96 cents at home depot for the two fittings uh, so the temperature started to get up already uh, it's right around in the hundreds already um, i got my shade here still and i need to just slowly install this I'm not going to start it up today but i just want to finish installation and continue on with the maintenance of the truck which there will be some more videos uh, on the truck uh, after this. So if you're a new subscriber, uh, please hit the, hit the like button and stick around because there's going to be some more videos on this truck here. So but let's finish the installation here. So I finished installing here. Uh, in order to hold this into place so I can get the three bolts to go on, I pretty much wedged a wrench on top of this bolt here and like kind of wedged it in here that kind of held it in place to just give me one bolt in there and then kind of squeeze the other other bolts in there but now we have this completely installed I tightened all the fittings and now I'm going to begin the pedal installation uh, so obviously um, we're gonna do everything backwards and install the brake pedal. Um, and you can see I, I, I was gonna clean this up and lube it, so I'm gonna do that right now. And then I'll finish off the installation here. All right guys, so I've, I have the pedals uh, completely reassembled 
I did not put the plastic trim on it because I'm gonna take this home to get it deep cleaned and actually uh, clean up all this old dirt that's been here for many, many years. Um, my pedal issue right for now, it's, it's fixed. It's not touching the floor anymore um, and it's fully engaging. Uh, I did not not build up the air pressure yet to see if I have any leaks because uh, I'm waiting for all the sealant to cure and um, since this it's going to be building more than 100 psi I don't want um, I want the, the sealant here to just be fully sealed um, everything is nice and tight um, we'll find out if I have any leaks if I have to retighten up uh, anything um, Hopefully I don't because back here you can't fit anything. You would have to disconnect everything all over just to get back there. Um, there are some things that I did not put back on. Uh, this was one of the OEM pieces. Um, it was just a pain in the butt. In order for this to, to go right in, I would have had to have another person with me. And again, I didn't have anybody else with me. And uh, probably would have been better to just put some type of glue or epoxy to, to hold this in place on the, the on the uh, on the new one uh, but you can see here it goes somewhere like that and if you have some type of glue to hold it in place maybe it would work um, the aftermarket one this is an aftermarket one I used the uh, factory one I did not want to use this one so so this is all done um, I'm going to continue to monitor this, this tomorrow. Right, I wanted to mention to you guys about 85% of this job is all wrenches. So I have a gear wrench set here that I used uh, for this uh, project today. And this goes all the way up to 32. So if you can get the set that goes all the way up to 32 from gear wrench, um, it'll get you where you need to, need to be for this project. Um, yeah, about 85% is definitely about wrenches because the fittings and all that stuff and the other percentage is just trying to disassemble in there. Um, I would rate this the skill level maybe at a, a 6 out of 10. Um, if you are mechanically inclined, you, you'll be able to do this. I feel just fine. If you're a guy some or gal who've just done oil changes and, and tire changes, maybe this might not be for you if you're to attempt um, guys who have done engine swaps or engine repair work on your own vehicles this may be uh, something simple to do because you're you're messing with air fittings and stuff and you got to put them back into place and test your brakes and all that stuff um, so if you're mechanically inclined i think you can do this um, but again if you just done tire changes I would not attempt to do anything like this. Um, the next thing for this truck uh, that I have to do is the airbags. I have a leaking airbag here, so I brought four new ones. I'm gonna do my first airbags and I have some tail lights coming in um, and new tires. Um, but again, we'll talk about that at a later time. This video is really just for you guys. If you have a braking issue with your truck and is hitting the pedal it's probably the brake assembly valve here and with aftermarket parts a few fittings and some sealant uh, it was about a hundred dollar job about a hundred bucks and a few hours of your time I mean I started at around eight o'clock this morning it's already almost three o'clock I took a few breaks and went to lunch went to Home Depot so you can easily get something like this done in about three hours maybe or less um, I just took my time to do it and um, yeah so thanks for watching uh, stay tuned and we're gonna get I'm gonna get some more video of you guys um, about my experience with my first semi truck and uh, it'll be a whole video about that I just wanted to get this video out on just the repair work for the brake assembly so thanks for tuning it's Manny Actual I'll catch you guys next time